Almighty. We're sitting here with Fred DeFellin. How are you, sir? Doing well, doing well. The one question we got to ask, why do you yang? Well, I, I just, I, I believe in his policies, and he's just a forward thinker. He's not left or right, but forward. You know, I'm more of a conservative kind of mindset, uh, but it just, he just speaks to me personally. You know, not only his policies, but just his personality style, you know? So, that's pretty much it. So have you heard how to um, how to get a thousand dollars a month every month for the rest of your life? How I heard? Yeah, how to do that? No. How do you... Right there in the door. This one. Should I just go to the website? Or... Well, <laughs> it's somebody who's running for president. Mm -hmm. uh, if he gets elected president, his name's Andrew Yang. Um, what he wants to do is he wants to give every citizen in the United States a thousand dollars a month, uh, every month, um, basically paid for by the big tech companies like Amazon, Google, all those big companies, because uh, none of them are really paying any taxes. Uh, they want to put on what's called a value-added tax onto them, collect the money, and then put it onto there. The only way you wouldn't get it is, or you don't get it at the same time, is let's say hypothetically. You get food stamps. Yeah. Um, you get one or the other. You either get the thousand dollars a month cash or that you can spend on anything you want, or food stamps. I no. Don't have food stamps, huh? I don't have food stamps. Right. So. Well, so, but uh, and anybody can get it as long as you're over 18 and not in jail and a U.S. citizen. But he's got to get elected president first. So he wants us to vote for him. Basically. Yes. Yes. And if we vote for him then that's what he wants to do. I, he did want to do a lot of other things also, but that's just one of the major big things that he wants to do. Is uh, It's called the Freedom Dividend. Are, are you familiar with like um, stocks, like when you buy stocks in a big company? Yeah. Like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, one of those things. Mm -hmm. Well, if the company makes a lot of money, they pay back their stockholders money. It's called a dividend. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing. Like the company or the country is making so much money, why not give the citizens back the money? Not just... You know, the, the rich few, but all of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. I would just say Google. In the UFC, it's more like 10 to 15 percent. And then when anyone tries to fight for a different pay scale uh, by unionizing, they get fired. So the question is, how do you balance that out? Um, one way is to actually see to it that there is an effective union, just like there is in pro baseball and pro football and pro basketball and major sports. And so if MMA is going to be a major sport, then you should start being like, okay, what other major sports do? 
Now, the UFC is its own animal in terms of MMA economics. If you look at one fighting championship, it's like a whole another ball of wax. Uh, so to me, I'm just about fair treatment of the fighters. I think the Ali Act might help. Um, I think unionization might help. I just want to try and get there. I'm open to different ways to get there. What up, my youngsters? So chances are you probably heard the name Andrew Yang His campaign might have started small But it has grown with a bang It's easy to see which way that this country is going There's lots of sticks and stones Both sides are catching and thrown But there is one man who can unite the land And it starts for Yang, he is the best choice, but to win this campaign, we need to hear your voice, vote for Yang, we need your support, it's not left, it's not right, no, we just keep moving forward. One other quick question. The mass pardon that you're thinking of for the marijuana, I'm all for it. Are you thinking of for the people that have been in there for, let's say, a long time, five years, more, that are institutionalized? Before throwing them right into society, they're going to be some sort of a... Yeah, cool. you transition. You have to make sure that they're in a situation where they're not going to come out to a worse situation than what they're in with. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Ready? All right, I'm here with... Danielle. Alright, Danielle. So why do you yay? I yay because I've never been more passionate about a candidate for the office ever. And I love everything that Andrew Yang does for civil discourse and bringing people together. And Yang beats Trump. I want to see this man in the White House. So I want to kind of dovetail off what he said um, with climate change but take it to the um, medical side. So what's your plan for um, health insurance? Because as the climate changes and the temperatures get warmer, we're gonna start seeing bacterias and different viruses that we have never seen before because they've been frozen for a thousand years. Oh, uh, that's right too. Mm -hmm. And terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Notice how health insurance costs and healthcare costs only go in one direction. Yeah. <laughs> Those they never reach out and be like, hey, good news, like it's cheaper this year. <laughs> it's like, this is our business model is actually built around just jacking up prices more and more. We spend twice as much on our health care as other countries for worse results because our system is not designed to make us strong and healthy. Our system is designed to maximize revenue and profits off of our backs. And I have a friend who's uh, looked at the numbers. Uh, I'm into numbers, you can tell. And, uh, and she said that she has never seen profiteering and price gouging at this level as she sees among device companies, drug companies, and private insurance companies. So when you talk about the cost of insurance, you have two sort of interrelated issues. Number one is we have to get the cost of health insurance off of our backs uh, as quickly as possible. Yes. So I'm for a Medicare for All plan that would take this expense, move it to the public, where the government could then get the access up and the prices down very, very quickly. You know the government's not even allowed to negotiate lower drug prices right now because the drug lobby is so powerful? <laughs> How messed up that is. We're spending two, three, four times as much on drugs as citizens of other countries. Now, to what you're suggesting that we're going to be facing new health threats as a result of a warming planet, uh, you're correct. So we need to have the proper investments in CDC and other uh, proactive measures that will hopefully try and identify these contagions as they're arising and then get them under control before they end up spreading into uh, the widespread population. Um, I live in a part of the country where there's a lot of Lyme's disease, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And oh man, has that been spreading like wild. Like as a parent of two young kids, I grew up in a, at a time when like the idyllic picture we all had for ourselves as kids was playing in the woods. Yes. Playing in the woods was the camp. You know, we all just run around and just imagine all this stuff. And now I'm looking up being like, do I want my kids playing in the woods? Because like when they play in the woods, we have to go through this crazy tick check yes. when they come in. And then they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, like poking around their head and being like, Looking for ticks. <laughs> uh, 
Because if you get Lyme's disease, it's, not, it's very serious, and the Lyme's disease has been like surging and surging. So this is one of the things you're talking about. There actually is a relationship, potentially, to the, the changing climate and the, um, the proliferation of, of ticks and Lyme. So I get it. I understand. Recently you released, right, well, top, top 10 for me. <laughs> Recently you uh, released a pretty significant technology policy that draws a, a real contrast between you and Elizabeth Warren, and that is your position about breaking up the big tech companies. Why do you think that's not the approach to take, and what should we be doing instead? To be clear, I'm not against having tech companies divest certain parts of themselves uh, in some of these situations. Like they have gotten too big, uh, they have stifled innovation, and they do just gobble up competitors instead of having the competitors grow. So I'm not anti breakup tech. I just think leading with breakup tech actually misses some of the bigger problems. Um, number one, it pretends that if we had four mini Amazons competing against each other, then that would somehow do the trick. Um, having four mini Amazons competing against each other would not resuscitate Main Street businesses and malls that are closing. Uh, and a lot of these tech marketplaces gravitate towards one or two winners. And one of the things I say is, like, who here wants to use the fourth best navigation app? That's like cruel and unusual punishments, like Apple Maps. You want to, like, throw that thing <laughs> I think they're four. They're freaking terrible. In some cases, a massive drop between one and four. So the... the Joke I told on the debate stage was like, no one's using Bing today. And then, uh, and then you know, like the number one Google search was, what is Bing? <laughs> um, so, so, saying that we're gonna like break them up and have them compete against each other, it's like, it doesn't actually solve some of the problems. And then if you dig deeper, like, what are the problems? One of the big problems is that our kids are getting hooked on these screens and getting depressed as a result. And if you had four mini Facebooks, you would actually be increasing the incentives for them to try and ratchet up the engagement for our kids. And I was like, what you have to do is you have to get into the guts of it saying, hey, maybe we need to recalibrate the 20 design decisions you made on this social media app instead of maximizing user engagement, which obviously maximizes your profits. Um, we need to maximize our kids' health, and that was gonna mean a different set of decisions. So saying break up tech, it's a 20th century solution to 21st century problems. We need to be more nuanced and surgical uh, because each of these tech companies is its own set of problems and issues. We should explore ideas like universal basic income to make sure that everyone has a cushion to try new ideas. We will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. We're going to have to consider new ways of thinking about these problems, like a universal income. Yo, there's no place to hide now that he's arrived. I'm saying he ain't playing now with this campaign. Bang, ah, uh, dang, it's and true. Come roll with the Yang Gang. He's the one I'm endorsing. This style is awesome. Taking donations, whatever size the portion. If not, volunteer your time instead. Grassroots won't stop at the polls till he's ahead. Uh, some say, who is that? Hey, yo, the newest cat. Other candidates go home feeling super whack. Yeah, they all done. Humanity first, that's the slogan. 2020, here we come. Drop your ballot at the booth just to prove he makes moves and guess what everybody gets a thousand bucks studies show what's bound to help economy making sure we all eat not just the wealthy now i must confess the country's a mess god bless us all it's all just a test why not nominate the king of debates yeah it's true with the crew winning both state to state each turn four years careful who you get stuck with drew yang gang that's who i hooked up with not many politicians can really be trusted drew yang gang that's who i hooked up with um, yeah. Yeah, there's no place to hide now that he's arrived I'm saying he ain't playing now with this campaign bang ah uh, dang it's and true come roll with the yang gang he's the one I'm endorsing this style is awesome taking donations whatever size the portion if not volunteer your time instead grassroots won't stop at the polls till he's ahead uh, some say who is that hey yo the newest cat other candidates go home feeling super whack yeah they 
all done. Humanity first, that's the slogan. 2020, here we come. Drop your ballot at the booth just to prove he makes moves. And guess what? Everybody gets a thousand bucks. Studies show what's bound to help economy. Making sure we all eat, not just the wealthy. Now I must confess, the country's a mess. God bless us all, it's all just a test. Why not nominate the king of the base? Yeah, it's true with the crew, winning from state to state. Each turn four years, care for who you get stuck with. Drew Yang Gang, that's who I hooked up with. Not many politicians can really be trusted. Drew Yang Gang, that's who I hooked up with. Yeah. Turn on, let me sign it. Hang on. Black marker. Black or silver. Oh, that would be dope. It might be, right? Oh. This is sort of as a darker background. Yeah, see, this is like a marker as an action. Nah, that's not very good. No? I guess I'll do it with a black. For sure. Either way, we're right now. By the way, do you like know the impacts that you're like, like how big this movement is? Like, can you comprehend it? I really cannot. Right? Me neither. He said he can't either. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because I'm just a man. Impacts, right? Oh, no. I was going to do it. Part two. Part two. That's perfect. Oh, no. Oh, no. Alrighty, we're here with, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Mimi. And I'm Jamie Lewis, we're from Phoenix, Arizona. Alright, and so why do you yay? Well for me, UDI, Humanity First, Democracy Dollars. Um, I, it just, it's, it's made sense for me since last April, when my bride introduced me to Andrew Yang. He's not a typical politician. He's, uh, I was hooked from day one. Any comments? Tell me about this sign. Well, we uh, joined our local Yang Gang, Phoenix Yang Gang, and I've got a nice printer at home, so I thought I'd put together some signs, and we take it wherever we go to show that there are some supporters in, in Arizona for Andrew Yang. It's a lot of fun. All right. by the time it gets to you all. Now this is a caucus state, and caucus states reward passionate organization. So if you think to yourself, hey, like there's not much I can do to influence whether Andrew Yang wins in Nevada, you are dead wrong. Everyone here in this room can profoundly influence whether we win in Nevada. <laughs> Every Nevada who decides to head for the caucus is worth his or her weight in gold. Um, and so that applies to you all who are uh, here in the state, but also anyone you talk to, your friends, neighbor, neighbors, relatives, worst enemies. You'd be like, hey, I know you hate me and I hate you. But how about Andrew Yang? <laughs> I'm just kidding, that'd be a little weird. Uh, most, most of us don't even have a worst enemy, right? It's like, can you even think of who your worst enemy is? I mean, my, my, yeah, anyway, it's like, if you have a worst enemy, you probably messed up at some point. <laughs> or they messed up and you're just a righteous anger. <laughs> One of those two things. Uh, so if you reach out to folks here in Nevada and get them excited about the campaign, uh, we can win in this state. I'm 100% sure of it. And we need your help to do it. Uh, one thing I'll say, and I know there's some folks watching, um, you know, uh, uh, from afar, but it's true in Nevada, it's true across the, the country. This election is so up in the air. It's like historically up in the air. Oh, yeah. 
what I mean by that is that when, if you look at the field at different stages in different cycles, this is the most up in the air of any cycle that people can remember in generations. Uh, in a way, if you have four front runners, you know what that means? You don't have any front runners. <laughs> no, really. It's a little bit like, yeah, and, and if you dig into the underlying numbers, so a lot of you are uh, really excited about this campaign, so you do look at like the occasional polls. And if you look at the occasional poll, you'd say like, okay, Yang has some support, it's like around the three to five percent level, like is it growing, is it holding steady, like, you know, where's it going in different places? That's the way most of us would interact with it. But if you go a level deeper into the polls, then you find out a number of things. Number one, the support for every other candidate, including the current front runners, is very, very soft. You ask a majority of the people that say, like, they check Joe Biden or whoever it is, and then they say, hey, can you change your mind? They're like, oh yeah, I can change my mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, like, the conviction level for any of the candidates is historically low. It's, Just so you know. So if you think it's like, oh, if you like start spending out there, is that you start seeing results on Friday? It's like, no, it's like a three to six week lag time. So we are very, very well positioned in this race to grow. We have very sophisticated people who've dug through the underlying numbers and they are pumped. They're looking at this and saying, like, wow, like this is exactly where we want to be. Grow and grow and grow and peak at the exact right time, and we are right on schedule. Now, does this mean that we have to work our work like mad and work super hard? Yes, yes, it does. And that's what we need you all to do here in Nevada. If you haven't already done so, we have organizers here around the room that have clipboards that if you just put your name and contact information. Uh, we'd love to have your help reaching out to your fellow Nevadans in the days to come. You know, we like operate in little groups, you have fun together, you go out and talk to people. And when you talk to someone and they're actually excited about the campaign or excited to learn, it's the greatest feeling in the world. How many of you have that feeling? Yeah. So if you haven't had that feeling and you want that feeling, sign up with some, one of the organizers on the, the perimeter, they have clipboards. And then you'll get to hang out with other awesome people, reach out to Nevadans, and help us make history together in 2020. seeds and putting some irons in the fire that when the seeds bloom and the irons come out of the oven, 
<laughs> this will be really, really excited. We would not be here without you. shock the world in 2020. Why do you yang, Susan? I yang because I have voted for my, almost my entire life, and it really hasn't done anything for the good of the people. I read Andrew Yang's book about two years ago about, and I went to his rally in April, and he, I can tell you, is actually for the people. It's heartwarming to see someone like that, and I know if you vote for him, I know he will do good for us. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. Thank you. <laughs>